everybody, we're back. This is Dave Vellante. I'm with Wikibon.org. And this is theCUBE. We come to the events. We extract the signal from the noise. We bring you the best guests, the smartest minds in the industry. David Richards is here. He's the CEO of Wandisco. We're also here with Jagain Sandar, who's the CTO and VP of engineering for the big data business at Wandisco. Gentlemen, welcome back to theCUBE. It's great to see you guys again. A pleasure, Dave, as always. So we've been tracking Wandisco now for a while. You guys are making steady progress. You're solving yeah, it's like you guys just go after the hard problems first. <laughs> because the easy stuff comes later. But uh, give us the update as to where you are. We were talking off camera about some of the milestones you hit at Strata. You're now at Hadoop Summit. You got four big announcements today and you guys are just uh, exploding. So uh, David, give us the update. Um, so, you know, it's one of those, where do I start? But I think the, 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 the sort of jewel in the crown is all about our active active replication technology, which we can actually do over a, over a wide area network. and we're probably the only company in the world that can do that. Um, and we've applied that technology now to Hadoop. So, I mean, our sort of catchphrase is that the data center is no longer a single point of failure. So we can provide active, active replication for Hadoop deployments now over a WAN. At uh, the last conference at Strata, we announced, as if, if you remember, we announced that we did the intra-data center product where we could replicate Hadoop within the data center. And now Jagen and his team have done a fantastic job and we now have in probably world record time, Hadoop 2.0 replicated over a wide area network. That's active, active replication of Hadoop over a WAN. Okay, so you've got um, the active, active piece. You've also made some announcements uh, around Amazon S3. Yeah, we, um, when we first launched our distro uh, back in February, we, as part of that, launched uh, something called S3 HDFS, which allows you to do the sort of the public cl cloud to private cloud deployment uh, with reference to Amazon. And we announced that we've open sourced that today, so that's available to everyone for free download, and it's available at wandisco.com, our website, which we're very pleased about. I think the community will be very happy that we've done that. Uh, we also announced, um, we had the Amp Labs from UC Berkeley in our offices a couple of weeks ago, and I'm delighted to say that we're the first company um, to provide commercial support for Spark and Shark. And that was driven, actually, by customers. So we began to see a growing demand for this high volume, high velocity in memory analytics from an open source perspective, and Spark and Shark are actually gaining momentum, which is kind of interesting in that space. So we're the first company to provide commercial support, working in conjunction with the Amp Labs guys from Berkeley, and to provide support for those products. So four big pieces, the Active Active S3, Hadoop, a new Hadoop distro, and then the in-memory pieces with Spark and Shark. Uh, Jagain, I want to dig into the, uh, the Active Active piece a little bit, this notion of a global namespace. Talk about that capability uh, how you guys are, are, are attacking it, and then we can you know, help our audience understand a little bit what the business value is. Sure. Um, Dave, ours is the first solution that runs HDFS across multiple data centers, separated by thousands of miles. We have a single HDFS cluster, so you can create a file in one data center, it's visible in the other data center immediately, and the data blocks get replicated there as well. Um, over at our booth, we have a demonstration where we generate data using TerraGen in one data center, Amazon, US East One, as a matter of fact, and we run TerraSort, which consumes that data in another data center in, in Oregon. By this, what we've essentially done is provided you with replication for complete failure of a data center. Back in, in Strata, we had a solution where if a single name node from our three, five, or seven name node cluster were to fail, your Hadoop continues to run uninterrupted. With this solution, you can lose an entire data center due to flood or some natural disaster. You'd still be fully functional with your other data center. That's the big important piece that we bring to the table. Yeah, so this is a really hard problem to solve, and a lot of people are going to say, no, that's magic, you know, how does that really work? And, and we were talking off camera about who are the companies that are actually trying to solve this problem? You guys, you know, we talk about Google, Spanner, um, really the only two at a distance that Correct. are really attacking this problem. And Google, Spanner, of course, puts a lot of, you know, specific assumptions and constraints, and you know, we talk about atomic clocks <laughs> and things like that. You guys use uh, uh, the, the uh, the notion of eventual knowledge, and I, you know, we don't have time to really dig into that, but it it's essentially allows you to take a, a hit within a data center, Correct. And, 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 but still allow you to propagate that knowledge such that you can recover from that failure. I think one of the important things to note as well is that the core technology that enables this is not new. 
Yeah, the Paxos algorithm, the which Paxos has algorithm. been around for since, what, yeah. 20, 25 years, right? And in fact, our application of Paxos to enable this distributed coordination engine that we have, it, that's not new either. It's been, we've, we've had technology in the market now for eight years, and that we did an IPO on the back of this technology for around a product called Subversion Multisite. So we've seen, we've, we've had instances like the Chengdu earthquake where data centers collapsed. Right, so we had one of our one of our major customers, O2 Micro, who make power power adapters for for laptops. That their, their whole data center was out of commission. But what actually happened with, the, with their developers? Well, nothing, because they were able to go home and fail over to another data center. In this case, that was in the United States. So we can actually do this, as Jigen was saying, this complete WAN scope failover without losing any, without zero downtime and zero data loss. Which I, I think is pretty incredible. Yeah, zero data loss is is key because it, normally you have. You either have to do unnatural acts, like put in a three data centers, which is incredibly expensive, or you have to expose yourself to data loss. What do I mean by that? So you write to a synchronous data center, and then you asynchronously trickle the data to some you know, data at a distance, and then there's that, always that lag time. You guys yeah. have solved that problem, if I understand yeah, that. Correct, That's it's correct. complete zero time to recovery. So you can recover immediately in a, com in a completely different geo region. Yeah, so there's probably some speed of light constraints in terms of how you handle that, but you haven't solved the physical problems yet, but uh, you're working on that, I understand. <laughs> 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 I'll have to defer that to our chief scientist, but yes, we have an implementation of Paxos that doesn't worry about time. So we can do this replication between India and the US, for example, the latency is not a problem. If you want instant failover, you can buy more bandwidth. Other solutions that use block level replication have an issue where the file systems such as ext4 or NTFS will fail. Ours is, 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 is a solution built on top of stock Apache Hadoop. So you're using Apache Hadoop, the file system doesn't change on disk or on wire, yet you get this disaster recovery capability where an entire data center can fail. So Wendisco is kind of an amazing company. It was a, it was a, you were a self-funded startup, right? You never took a dime of outside capital until you did your IPO, if I understand this correctly. That's correct. You're solving some of the world's hardest problems <laughs> like the zero data loss problem, which obviously would be big, for example, within financial services. Take us back to how you actually did that. I mean, I can imagine you going into an account saying, hey, we have this capability, and somebody, again, in financial services saying, wow, I really need that, but Wendisco? Uh, little old Wendisco, who, uh, who are you guys? If you were IBM, I would say yes, but I can't you know, bet my business on you because I'll lose the job. How were you able to, to get through that hurdle? So, it, Necessity is, is the mother of invention, I'm very fond of saying, and, and, and I think m m great companies are founded out of necessity, actually, more than by design and venture capital, et cetera. And uh, we decided to, sp I felt that the intellectual property in the company was so strong that I really didn't want to sell it to, to venture for cents on the dollar. You know, sorry, sorry venture capitalists out there, but I just didn't want to do that. Um, so it, we, beget, we formed the company organically, and we did it without sales guys, so every single one of our initial customers came to us because we didn't have an enterprise sales team. So we had this amazing product where customers had a problem and they came to us for a solution. And back in 2009, I got a phone call one day from um, a very senior guy at Hewlett Packard uh, who eventually bought, they, they bought the, an enterprise-wide deal for their entire company. So you know, Wandisco technology is now available to every single HP developer throughout their organization. And that was a pivotal moment for the company because it, it took us from being a small startup to doing a multi-million dollar deal and the rest, as they say, is history. We did an IPO, as you mentioned, in 2012. Well, you've actually written about this in terms of the distributed nature of developers and the impact of network downtime on developer productivity. So that was sort of, an, was that an early sort of value proposition? How has that, is that the case and how has that evolved over time? So we did, the company started out solving the problem of uh, if you have developers in India and China, United Kingdom, United States, how do they collaborate effectively over a wide area network? Well, the answer is, of course, they can't. We often find it's cheaper when we initially set up the system to FedEx a DVD of the source tree over to China because it, it takes three days to download the thing in the first place. So that there is that speed of light problem which you got back to. Right. I think somebody once did some research, it's cheaper to send a message via a pigeon to South Africa than it is by actually sending electronically. <laughs> so, um, Chevy truck access <laughs> method, I call it. <laughs> yeah. So the, the original value proposition was both 
efficient, so what happens if, you know, we had a one customer who they had downtime in India consistently because people were hanging their washing, washing using the, the fiber line as a washing line, so the, the fiber line kept on going down every five <laughs> minutes. So, you, you know, we, we solved that problem, which is outage. We also solved the performance issue because if you have 4,000 developers in India constantly downloading from a master server somewhere in the United States, that's 4,000 multiplied by all of those downloads. That's a hell of a lot of downloads that you've got to cope with. So we, are, we always have the data locally for those, for those developers. So a really strong value proposition in both performance and outage um, in that marketplace. And now taking that message and applying it to the Hadoop marketplace, and how did we get into the Hadoop marketplace? We didn't just one day go out and say, right, we're going to develop a Hadoop solution. We went and acquired Jagain's company, which included him, himself and also a guy called Konstantin Schwazko, mm. that was one of the original six at Yahoo yeah. that, that developed Hadoop in the first instance. So I think our execution strategy, because we never took venture, alluding back to your in initial question, is very, very strong. Companies founded very, very strong foundations. Yeah, when I, we first met, I started asking questions and, and was uh, very impressed with the, the chops you guys had in the Hadoop committer community. Uh, Jagain, I wonder if I could ask you, so uh, this, this notion of, of active, active at, diff, at distance, uh, and David, you just pointed out the Paxos algorithm has been around for a long time, yet very few are able to solve that problem. Nobody, really. You guys are really, yes. really the, the first, and again, I would throw Google Spanner in there because it's just a really interesting academic paper and worth reading if you got nothing to do and you want to <laughs> make your eyes bleed. <laughs> but uh, but why, why has it been so difficult and how have you guys been able to solve this problem where others have not? So, um, in addition to the eight years that we've had this product in the marketplace, our chief scientist, Alad, has been doing distributed coordination for the better part of 20 years. And Paxos, a true implementation is really hard to get right. All sorts of compromises can be made and you can build things such as Zookeeper and other solutions which make somewhat compromises, but your solution is also 98% true, not 100% true. We didn't take that path. We took the long, hard route. We built a Paxos that's truly independent of time and proven and robust. And it's, it's a lot of credit goes to Alad, our chief scientist, of course. Um, but that's the core of our intellectual property. Yeah, so because the, the hard part is if something goes wrong, it, you, you've got to make sure that you don't lose data, and that's Absolutely. a really tricky problem. All right, so David, how do you envision customers you know, applying this, this, this capability? What are the discussions uh, like going on, and how does it relate to what's going on here at uh, Hadoop Summit? So, uh, first of all, we've got a lot of activity in our, in our sales pipeline right now. Um, we anticipate that we'll be making an announcement in the next 48 hours that's quite a large OEM uh, with a very large telecommunications company um, where they have to have the four nines, they have to have 99.9999% uptime. Um, if, if Hadoop is in fact going to move into, the, into from batch to transactional, to the transactional sphere. Now that notion that we said was, we said, we thought four months ago that this was going to be very important, it's critical. If Hadoop is going to be an applications platform, it has to have guaranteed high availability and we're providing that. Uh, we're also talking to other, other vendors about OEM deals and we have a very, very strong sales pipeline right now of customers that may have already trialed to dupe been, uh, you know, use Cloudera or Hortonworks in the, on, a, on a trial basis and now looking to move that into full production and I think we're the company to take it there. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned, you know, the possibility of OEMs. Is, I mean, I would see a number of enterprise companies wanting access to this capability. So I was going to ask you about partnerships and your ecosystem. Can you, you know, can you talk a little bit more about your, your philosophy in that regard? Yeah, so, I mean, our initial execution strategy is certainly an OEM strategy and we see OEM as a, as a critical component of our early entry into the marketplace. I think the market's so big, I can't, I, you know, we've got 40 enterprise sales guys, I, I, I can't scale my enterprise sales team fast enough to take advantage of demand out there in the marketplace. So we have to, we have to look at OEMs and uh, w without being disrespectful to some of the companies that we're currently in negotiation with, you know, some of the usual suspects in and around the Hadoop distribution arena, we're very interested in partnering with those. So t typically we, we've had a direct sales model so actually OEM is, is kind of new to us, um, but, but we're, certainly, we're certainly very open to doing OEMs. On the partnering side, we've, we've partnered with companies like um, Data Guys, for example, to fill some of the gaps that we see in security and certainly in uh, a, a, around services, certainly for the early part of the market, educating customers, helping customers to get Hadoop into production is very important. So we've partnered with a number of those vendors recently. Excellent, so we'll be looking for you know, potential announcements there over the next you know, several months, and then we've got, of course, uh, 
uh, uh, Hadoop World coming up in the fall. Yep. So <laughs> yet another milestone. You seem to be on this cadence of, of innovations and announcements you know, along these big shows. What should people be looking for? I'll give you the last word. I think you should be looking for us to make announcements that have a revenue associated with them, and certainly our shareholders would be looking for some of those things as well. It's all well and good to make you know, lots of product announcements. We now have to show execution mm -hmm. and take those into, into full-blown, mission-critical Hadoop deployments, and hopefully Jagan can keep his eyes open. I know he's been working <laughs> a number of weekends recently. <laughs> Excellent. All right, gentlemen, listen, thanks for, very much for coming on theCUBE. Wan Disco, really interesting company. Uh, check them out. Uh, check out the Paxos algorithm. Uh, look at the Wikipedia entry. It's, it's very, very interesting. They're really the first example of active, active. Our David Floyer is going to be all over this topic. I want you to spend some time with him, Jagan, if you wouldn't Sorry, mind. And, uh, all right, everybody, keep it right there. We're right back with our next guest. This is theCUBE. We're live from the Hadoop Summit in San Jose, California. Thank you.